Hello and welcome to Contemplations and today we are talking about what factors make films good because of course we tend to dunk on woke films and how we talk about how bad things are getting, how things are carbon copies or remakes but I think it'd be nice to actually talk about what makes them nice. We've done this for music before haven't we where we talked about what makes music good and now we're going to do the same for film. I only want to be negative, I just want to trash on movies and say why, why they're bad. Get, Get it out. all out of your system. Get it all out of your system right now. What's your least favourite film ever? Ah, oh, there are many. <laughs> There's too many. Me, me. I want to answer. Um, yeah. All right. I remember watching the film Magnolia, which is, you know, seen by critics as one of the best character acting dramas going, and it was three hours of utter teeth pulling. It's Paul Anderson, isn't it? It is, yeah, there Paul Thomas be, Anderson. Yeah, who did There Will Be Blood. But I thought it was boring, pretentious, and frustrating. I've heard very mixed things about it, like... Mm like that but at least there will be blood that's a fantastic is one film. of the best films ever made and if we're going to mm. be positive let's start off with talking about something like that but there will be blood okay what what are some of our favorite films before we get going let's let's start okay who wants stelios first okay mm -hmm. so i would say that my i would put lord of the rings as number one i don't want yes. to i don't want to to discern between yeah, number all three one, of them. All three of them. It's like it's picking one. between children, but yeah. also um, the two towers. Yes. Um, Let's not get into that. Let's not start any arguments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's okay. start a punch and up. And then I would say The Gladiator. <laughs> that's a great film, yeah. Number two. So that's good for. Uh, and then possibly uh, Aliens, the sequel to Alien. Mm. Uh, I do. I, that's probably my favorite out of all of these sort of universe of of the alien franchise yes and it has huge rewatchability and the thing the Coming thing by john the carpenter walls, oh yeah the thing's fantastic yeah. Yeah, yes yeah, yeah, yeah. although i will say having watched it only once but still it was a very impactful watch i do now prefer at the mouth of madness to the thing of john carpenter's work mm. and i suggested it to you mm. did i yes not? yes yeah. you did i'd already been thinking about watching it but you reminded me, so yeah. thank you very that much. I gave for that. you four it is movies. A good film. I think it's mm. your turn to. Me? Okay. Well, I think 2001: A Space Odyssey is my favourite. Mm. I've uh, got a very soft spot for Kubrick, as I'm sure we'll find as out. As everybody should. Yes. Um, I think the Lord of the Rings films are obviously some of the best. I read the books as a kid, so there's also that added nostalgia. Plus, they are fantastic. Um. Another Kubrick pick, but Full Metal Jacket should be up there somewhere. I think it's probably my favourite war film going. Um, it's pretty high up there. What else is there? I quite like the film Seven. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a good film. Um, <clears throat> I feel like I need to throw in a curveball, don't I? Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. That's a, an, uh, one of my favorite films of all time as well that one doesn't tend to get picked very much but as part of it is that especially it, of gilliam's works yeah. it's a bit of a mixed one for him as far as i'm concerned uh, yeah from what i've seen from other people as well mm -hmm. that's uh, directed by terry gilliam who's one of the, the pythons and uh yeah I, I like that film largely because of the the uh, great acting by depp and del toro but also the fact that there are lots of um interesting um, editing and camera tricks that sort of portray the state of mind of both uh, the main characters on the various drugs they're taking and the sort of madness of it, the pointlessness of it. And there's a, uh, it, it almost seems like it wasn't a film in a way because there's not really a clear plot. It's sort of chaos. I like that. Slightly controversial point. I, I will say something that will definitely make you think less of me. I've tried three times to watch a Space Odyssey. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, most I did was 20 minutes. I, I fall asleep every time. Could you not get past the intro sequence in prehistoric times? Uh, just, yeah. Just grow up. Evolve. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. still you're staring at prehistory going, evolve already. Come yeah. on. <laughs> you must hate going to the zoo. <laughs> but no, um, to be honest, it actually took me um, a couple of times to watch a Space Odyssey because it's a slow burn and I fell asleep the first two times I tried to watch it. And on the third attempt, I watched it all the way through and loved it to bits. Okay, okay. So it, it's worth sticking with, but it is a slow burn. I burner. will at some point. And it's one yeah. of those films, it's a bit like, it's like the, the sort of film equivalent of Radiohead. You need a few listens or a few watches 
to really get into it. <laughs> really showing your hipster credentials right there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm 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 one beard away from being a hipster and you know, I need the glasses and that's it. I collect records, I drink IPAs, um, I listen to music You're nobody's gay. heard of. Subtly gay. Yeah. What about overtly gay? <laughs> well, we've not got quite there yet. <laughs> get a few no, drinks yeah. down you. Yeah. yeah. It's a- Harry, we haven't heard your yeah, that's top true. movies. Yeah, uh, I will cover some trodden ground here and say, obviously, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, mm-hmm. extended versions. Of course. Anything um, less is blasphemy. Uh, Stanley Kubrick, I would also include The Shining there. I think that, that's a great a, one. Yeah. As a standalone horror film, The Shining is perfectly constructed. I would say uh, there's not a moment wasted in that mm-hmm. whole film. Everything is as effective as it can be for creating the maximum tension. I think that's brilliant. Uh, here's a curveball. Hot Fuzz is definitely mm-hmm. one of my favorite films of I all like time. I like Hot Fuzz, but I wouldn't rank it among my favorites. As a pure comedy, as well as incorporating the action and thriller elements, I think it's amazing. Um, I will also throw in... As a mainstream film, I'm going to say the first three Pirates of the Caribbean films. They are good. Are I'll give three you of my yeah. favorite action adventure mm-hmm. films ever made. Mm-hmm. And I can't really differentiate between them because the first one's perfect, but also the other two as a duo of films are perfect and round out the story that the first one set up. I think the second one is probably my favorite out of those because I like the Kraken as a sort of mm. anti hero this sort of unspoken unseen behemoth beneath the waves and the music for the kraken is fantastic yeah like the dum 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 like I'm, that in the background so menacing i'm also going to throw out um the recent well the first three films of robert eggers i was going to mention robert eggers a very yeah. new filmmaker who is probably the only filmmaker i'm interested in who's been m- putting out new works new and original works in the past 10 years i think he's fantastic and i can't wait to see what he does with his um, nosferatu remake yeah, I'm, which I'm is going to be really that. interesting and because it's me i have to basically all of david lynch's works <laughs> post and including blue velvet are basically perfect, even if Inland Empire is one of the most confusing films I've ever seen in my life. I even and it's like very Dune. difficult. I do like Dune. I think Dune gets a bad rap, although I will say... Dune. Yeah, from, from the three-quarter point or two-third point onwards, it really, you can see where they had to cut out like two hours of the film, and mm-hmm. it gets really, really rushed, which is a shame, because otherwise it would have been a masterpiece. Yeah, I love. Can you imagine if he had chosen, as he was offered to do, to direct Return of the Jedi? Oh, and he chose Dune instead. We're in the wrong universe. We need to go to a parallel universe where this happened. I need to see David Lynch's Jabba the Hutt. I I would trade it all in to watch that David Lynch Star Wars. (laughs) (laughs) That's not true. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, those are those Mm -hmm. are my picks. I know I picked quite a few, but there's such a broad breadth to film and especially quality film that I think just narrowing it down to one is narrowing yourself a bit too much. Josh, you said that uh, Mm -hmm. you were annoyed by some movies. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to hear also what Harry was annoyed. And I want to say, for instance, a movie I was very much annoyed with was Tenet by Christopher Nolan. I saw this in the cinema and I wholeheartedly agree with this. It was it was difficult to follow and not in a way where it's sort of artistic and interesting and complex. In a way that is just, I can't be bothered to invest my time and energy in following this, so I'm just going to watch it like a Michael Bay film in that it's just spectacle and you're not meant to switch your brain on. Very gratuitous. It was, yeah. yeah. And it was also a silly p- plot in that the the main character was basically risking the world to save this one woman who he'd just met and there wasn't enough of an incentive for him to do that so he was employed i can't remember the exact plot because i only saw it once because it sucks um <laughs> it isn't isn't he working for like an alphabet agency trying to save the world from i don't clashing, remember i tried to erase it from my memory yeah from like clashing time in my, in my mind it's that annoying film mm. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. And on the point, I will say one of the worst things about films in general 
is that save for a fair, uh, save for maybe a handful that I've seen, uh, the alphabet agencies in America, and this is included even in some of my favorite films and TV shows, are almost universally portrayed as being forces for good, which they are not. Twin Peaks, for example. Yes, sadly, Twin Peaks has that, which I forgive it because the rest of it is so wonderful. Also in Twin Peaks, though, Dale Cooper, the the, the excellent lawman, does get investigated by the FBI for, for doing the right thing outside he does, of regulation yeah. and it's impl- and it's stated pretty much outright that the unit that you're following in Twin Peaks is kind of its own autonomous uh, part of the FBI that doesn't interact much with the rest of it but either way you know lots of films are very very guilty of that to watch the full video please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com